Forms are essential building blocks for web pages. Handling forms in React is not straightforward. By the end of this short series, you will understand everything about forms and the best way to create them in React for any use case. Before we dive into React forms, let's see how we can create forms natively within HTML. Over here, I have created a form tag. Inside my form, I'm going to create three input fields, first name, last name, and email. So I'm going to create an input tag, give it a type of text, give it a placeholder as first name. I'm going to call it first name. Give it a name attribute of first name. There you go. Now, similarly, I'm going to create next two elements. Give it a placeholder of last name. Change the name attribute to last name. And finally, for my email, change the name attribute to email. And placeholder to email. For the type, I'm going to change from text to email. There you go. So you see first name, last name and email. Let's see how we can submit this form. To submit it, we have to create a submit button. Let's create a button, give it a type of submit. I'm going to call it save. I'm going to give it a class name of button. There you go. First name, last name and email. Let's try to fill this form. I'm going to give test data, test, test, and give it an email of test at test.com. Let's try to submit this form. You see my form got refreshed and you can see in the URL, there is form data that we have filled. Let's try to explore this behavior of forms. To my form element, I'm going to give a method I'm going to call it post and for my action, let's try to submit this to a sample website. Let's say example.com. Let's save this and let's see what happens. I'm going to give first name, last name and email and I'm going to submit this. When I submit this, you see, I'm redirected to example.com. If I take a look at my network tab under my example.com, I see the request method is post. Now, if I scroll down at the bottom, I can see the form data that we have entered. This is the behavior that is by default in your forms. Whenever you submit the data, it is going to submit to the URL that you have mentioned in the action parameter. Let's try to check this again now instead of post let's try to send a get request for my same url let's see what happens give it some test data and i'm gonna submit this form i'm redirected to example.com and you see because we did a get request you can see the form data in my url this is the default behaviors of form in your native html Let's try to see how we can make this work in React. I'm going to copy this whole thing, cut it from here, and I have created a React component to use it to check this behavior. And I'm going to paste it over here. Let's see if it still renders and you can see it still renders first name, last name and email. When I try to enter this data and when I try to submit the form, it still redirects me to the example.com. We need to prevent this default behavior of redirecting to website. Most of the time we need to make this network call and get back some data. So in order to do that, the first thing that we'll have to do is get rid of this method and action and declare a parameter called on submit. On submit is called whenever you submit a form. This on submit takes a handler, a submit handler. Let's call it handle submit. I'm going to define this handle submit function. This handle submit function comes with a parameter argument. We call it as an event. 
to prevent the default behavior we use e dot prevent default let's try to console log this event see what happens change class to class name and i'm going to save this i'm going to enter my form first name last name and email i'm going to save this i'm going to hit on enter and you see the event that we have logged we have prevented the default behavior of form redirecting or refreshing and we are able to log the event now how do we access the data that is handled by dom in order to extract the data that are that is controlled by dom we can define a ref to get the data of my first name i am going to define a first name ref i'm going to call it a first name ref and assign it to use ref i'm going to assign this first name ref to my input element i'm going to add parameter ref and give it first name ref to access the data instead of logging the event i'm going to log the current value of my ref i'm going to give first name last name and email and i'm going to submit the form you see i can log my ref data now if i change my first name and if i submit it again you see the ref value getting updated this is how you get data from the elements that are controlled by dom let's create for last name and email as well i'm going to assign a ref to my last name give it last name ref and assign a ref to my email give it email ref in my console log i'm going to create an object give it a property of first name assign it to my current value of first name ref and do the same for last name and email let's try this one more time give some sample data submit my form and you see first name last name and email this is the data that you would be sending you would be doing an xhr request let's try to add custom validation let's say we have to show an alert message to the user whenever whenever they use admin as his first name so instead of test if i type admin i should show an alert or a message saying that he cannot use that first name how do we do that at this point the natural inclination for us is because we are having the access of this data through refs somehow make use of refs in order to render or in order to show that alert message maybe something like this under input i'm going to create i'm going to access the value of my first name ref and i'm going to compare this value with admin and if there is a match then i'm going to render a message maybe call it you cannot use this and when it is not admin just ignore the message this is what most of us would think would work now let's see if it works if i type in admin nothing happens let's see if i try to save this data now when i save it i still don't get that message getting rendered let's see why this behavior occurs let's try to log a console a, a render statement to see how many times our component renders when i hit on save you should be seeing in my console tab it says my component has rendered twice that's because we are using react in the development environment under strict mode where it renders twice but usually it renders one time let's try to add some data let's give it admin test and email save this data and you see my component still does not render this is the default behavior 
of uncontrolled components. Your React does not detect the changes that you are making to your elements. Whenever you make any changes to these elements, React has no way of identifying that change. That's because your DOM is taking care of updating those elements. React does not have control on these elements. This way of creating forms or elements is called uncontrolled elements or uncontrolled components. Let's see how we can convert this whole thing into control components. I have created another component called it react form. I'm going to copy the form from above. I'm going to use the same form. And the first thing is let's get rid of all these refs. Let's get rid of this validation. We'll add this later. Remove last name ref and remove email ref. To control the data that is present in these elements, we need to manage a state. For managing state of these different elements, we can either create separate state for each of these elements or create one single state variable and manage state for all these elements. So let's do that. I'm going to create a state, call it form data. And I'm going to create set form data for updating the state. I'm going to assign this to use state hook. For my initial values of my state, I'm going to give it first name. I'm going to assign it to empty. I'll do the same for last name and my email. I'll get rid of this on submit handler. I will add this later. You see, uh, this still works. If I go to my components under my react form, I can see my state variables, first name, last name, and email. Let's add a variable or a, a parameter called value. For now, let's give this test and let's see what happens. Now, when I hit on save, you see my first name has rendered test. Let's try to edit this. When I'm trying to edit this, I'm not able to do that. My element has become read only. To change this value, we need to have an on change handler. I'm going to create a on change handler. I'm going to create this on change handler, call it handle on change. This method gets a event. I'm going to console log this event. To my on change parameter, I'm going to give this handle on change. Whenever I try to modify my data, you see a event is triggered. This event is triggered whenever there is a keystroke whenever I try to change the data. Now let's try to access that data. You can do that by accessing it from target.value. You see, whenever I'm making those changes, I can see that data. We need to set this data to my value field or to my input element. To do that, we need to set it to my form data, first name, last name, and email. Let's try to make this handle on change more generic so we can reuse this for other fields. To do that, let's modify this. Let's add two new arguments, field and value. For the field, I'm going to give it a first name. And for the value, I'm going to give it target.value. Under my handle on change, instead of this console log statement, I'm going to set a new form data. I'm going to create a new form data, get the value of the current form data. For this new form data, I'm going to assign field and value. In my case, it is first name and the target value. I'm going to set this form data. This event is triggered for every keystroke. So for my value, I'm going to give it form data of first name. 
let's see i modify my form do you see it is getting updated in my elements if i go to my components and under state you can see it is getting updated in my state as well now every time i make these changes it is getting updated in the state let's do the same for remaining fields for last name i'm going to give value of form data of last name and i'm going to add the on change event handler call it last name Similarly for email, copy this handler, copy this value, change it to email and my handle on change should be email. Let's try this again. I'm entering a test data. You see my state is getting updated with first name, last name and email we have controlled the data that is getting entered in these elements through react this way of creating these elements are called control components let's try to add that admin validation i'm going to add this form data of first name compare this to admin if it is admin i'm going to render a message saying you cannot use this If it's not admin, I'm just going to ignore this. Let's see if this works. In my first name, I'm going to enter admin and you see that alert message is getting rendered. Let's try to log a render statement. Let's see how many times my component renders. I go to my console tab. I'm going to clear these initial renders. When I change my first name, you see for every keystroke, my component gets rendered. That's because for my every keystroke, I'm setting a new change. I'm setting a new state. Let's try to add admin and you see, I can see that message. So let's see how this works. Every time there is a change, my on change handler is called. Under handle on change, I'm setting a new state. That state is getting updated in my input element. Whenever there is a change in a state, your component gets rendered. During render, React takes the value that is present in your element and updates that to your DOM value. This way, we are giving a complete control of the state to the React. This way of creating elements are called control elements or control components. Most of the time you would be using control components in your use cases. There are very rare scenarios where you will be going for uncontrolled components. But just remember this for most of the use cases, try to stick with control components. That's it for today's video. In later sections, we will explore the best React library to create powerful form components. To get those updates, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.